In this video, I'm going to use StackCrunch to construct a frequency table. This is the data for the blood type sampling that we just saw. We had 20 patients or 20 individuals. We sampled 20 of them to get their blood type, not including the positive and negative factor. So we have in our raw data here the blood type, and that's the only column that we're dealing with, A, B, A, B, and so forth. This matches the data from our previous problem. If you want to construct a frequency table, what we need to do, as you can see here, we have the data. You would think we would be in the data column, or the stack column, or the graph. It's not quite a graph. What we're actually going to do is go into the stat column, and we're going to go into tables. We are constructing a table and a frequency table. So I will click on frequency. Now I need to tell StatCrunch which column it should look in. So if I click on blood type, what it's going to do is going to go through that column and it's going to look for unique values, values that match as well. Now you need to be careful because if you have some capital letter A's and some lowercase letter A's, StatCrunch is going to see that as two different values. You need to make sure that they're either all capitalized or all lowercase. So it's going to look in blood type. If you wanted to select multiple columns, if you wanted multiple tables, you need to hold down the command key, the command key, and you would click on that. We're not going to group by anything, and the statistics that we want to calculate, we want to calculate the frequency. If you look down here, we could do quite a, quite a few different types. We want to do the frequency that's going to count the number of types. If you want to click on relative frequency in addition to frequency, you need to hit and hold on your keyboard command. If you hold down command and click, it will select multiple values here, multiple choices. We're not going to do cumulative frequency. We're not going to do anything involved with cumulative. But what I do want to look at is the percent of total. Remember, relative frequency is going to give us the decimal form. If you want the percentage form as well, you're going to want to hold down command and click on the percent of total. And that will convert those relative frequencies to percentages. We're not going to order by anything, and we're not going to store it in a data table. If we clicked on store in a data table, what that would do, it, it would put it in our spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do is click on compute. And here we have our frequency table for the blood types. We have listed A, A, B, B, O. Notice they put it in a different order than I did. The frequencies, the number of times that value appears, that observation appears. The relative frequencies, remember this is going to be in decimal form, and, excuse me, this is going to be the percent of total. It converted the relative frequencies to percent of total. Now, if you want to save this, let's say I asked you to do this on a quiz. If you wanted to save this frequency table, you can select it, and you could right-click and copy. I'm on a Mac, so it might look slightly different, right? Or you could hit Control-C and paste it into a Word document. If you wanted to email this to yourself, under Options, if you click on Download, it's going to download it as a, a different file. What I want to do is to save it. I'm going to title it Frequency Table. I'm not going to share it, it's just with me. And then hit Save. And what you can do is either view it in your Results folder, or you can actually mail it to yourself. So if you click on Mail, this is from my email address. This would be your email address showing up. You can mail it to yourself. Or if you needed to mail it to me, you could mail it to me as well. And you could enter a message with a subject and include the full text and attach graphics. This is the same thing that we could do if we were saving graphs. Now we have to be careful though because with frequency tables, they don't save as images. It saves as an actual spreadsheet. So when we actually move on into this module into graphs and saving graphs, you will be able to right-click and save that picture onto, let's say, your desktop. So I'm going to hit cancel here, and go back. This is the frequency table. And as you can see, using StatCrunch is a lot easier. The only issue is if you have to put in the data yourself, that could be time consuming. But now we only have to put in the data, and then StatCrunch will do the calculations for us.